my previous slides here. So one second. Okay. Okay, everybody should be looking at the title slide, which is NCME. And we had real trouble coming up with what the title slide should be because, you know, typically it's the city where we're in. And clearly San Francisco wouldn't be appropriate. And uh, Orlando's next year. We're not sure about Minneapolis yet. So I wrote to um, Matt Gartner and Brian Leventhal, who seem to do such a great job with the website and, and always have great pictures. I said, here's a dilemma. What should we do? So the meetings in cyberspace, and this is the picture they sent, which I thought was just perfect. So thanks to, to Matt and Brian. And also like to thank our sponsors. Uh, at the gold level, we have Pearson, uh, the Graduate Management Admissions Council, um, NWEA, Riverside Insights, and Educational Testing Service. At the silver level, we've got the National Board of Medical Examiners, ACT, the Law School Admissions Council, AIR, EdCount, College Board, Curriculum Associates, and Alpine Testing Solutions. We really appreciate your support also. And then at the friend level, we've, we've got uh, universities and some of the smaller testing agencies, and um, we really appreciate your support also. And just to call out to my university colleagues, I know there's more measurement programs out there than we see here. And uh, I will be getting in touch with you to sponsor the 2021 conference in Orlando. Um, so thanks for joining us. Uh, of course, you know, we have to start with from the get go that, you know, we're sad we can't meet in person. Um, I, like all of you, I look forward to the conference every year and, and this being the year where, uh, you know, I had a hand in, in putting the conference together. It was especially, especially disappointing um, knowing that we have just such a great program ready to go. However, you know, compared to what other people are facing these days, it's, it's really an inconvenience. And one of the things I'll talk a bit more about today is, you know, our plans if we can reschedule the conference. Um, I've got everybody muted. That's, uh, you know, we've got 165 people so far. So that, that's just necessary. Um, but if you do have comments, please enter them into the chat window and we will um, try and address them afterwards as, as best we can. So here's the agenda. I'm going to give my president's report kind of the state of the council and talk about our accomplishments. We'll give an update on our plans for the, um, the 2020 annual meeting, what those might be. Uh, we'll have a business and finance report. Um, Dr. Rosemary Rushitar will give us that. And then we wanna go through the awards. Um, we've got some great award winners today and, and um, Michael Walker will, will present those awards. Then just acknowledge some other people for their great service. Um, talk about the incoming board members, the transition of power, which I know is, is a big deal. It's like um, you know the last episode of the last season of Game of Thrones, so this should be interesting. <laughs> uh, and and uh, our president-elect, uh, Ye Tang, will lay out her new presidential initiatives and she'll be president at that time. I'm not gonna give my presidential address today. If we have a conference in September, I'll give it at that time. If not, we'll either um, do it like this uh, and post it via Zoom or um, maybe even do it in Orlando in 2021 if, if that's what happens. So, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so what is the state of NCME? What I'm gonna talk about today are the accomplishments, give you a membership update, um, and talk about some of, the, some of the other things that are on the screen here. Um, I, I'm not gonna give my view of the field. I did write about that in the newsletter, so I encourage people to, you can actually get updates on all these things in the, in the April edition of the newsletter, which is on our website. So with respect to the accomplishments, the first thing I wanna point out is really the NCME mission and goals were revisited. Um, and I, I wanna thank the board for their support in, in looking at, at the goals. We thought, you know, we could probably um, really do better moving us from a group of people who are just talking about the, the technical issues in measurement, which are remain important, but how those issues and how we can work on those issues to actually improve society. So through the process of dis discussing with the board and then surveying the membership and getting your input, we revised our mission statement. And I think this is something we can all, you know, really be proud of. So the national, who are we? We're a community of measurement scientists and practitioners who work together to advance the theory and applications of educational measurement to benefit society. And then based on this mission, we revisited our goals. And we have five goals right now that we think come right from the mission. 
So advance the science and scholarship of educational measurement, obviously. Promote knowledge, understanding, and impl implementation of best practices in educational measurement. Increase, increase and strengthen NCME's partnerships to improve assessment policy and practice. Create and maintain a vibrant, diverse, and inclusive community of measurement practitioners and researchers. We know uh, diversity is important and we wanted to get, to get that in, into our um, goals when we start to talk about community. And provide members with a strong professional identity and an intellectual home. So the board has adopted these just a few days ago at our last board meeting. And um, you know, I think these are, are great goals that we can all agree on what we should pursue. We've made some progress on some and some we're, we're not close to, but that it's gonna guide our, our direction for the foreseeable future. So just, if you think about our mission, um, you know, just revisit our mission statement. There's two things I wanna point out. One is community and the other is working together. Because we know we come together, you know, at the conference and other places for, for research and for professional development, um, for camaraderie, you know, uh, meeting old friends, um, networking, of course, and, you know, fun, uh, fellowship, we also want to acknowledge and, and praise uh, our accomplishments and people who've made particular accomplishments. More fun, um, more celebrations, and you know, just, just to have a, a good time. So NCME is really more than a community, it's the people, and, and I don't want us to, to forget that. And, and we even have a little bit of satire thrown in there. So thank you for, for helping us be that community. The second thing I want to talk about after the accomplishments is, is the, you know, our initiative to put the E back in NCME. And what we mean by that is making educate, uh, our organization and measurement specialists in general more relevant to uh, education. How can educational assessments improve education? So some of the things we do, we've done, we've, we've started the uh, state and local assessment leaders um, special interest groups. There are 40, um, actually 43 state assessment directors are now members of NCME. We've got 42 members in the state and local assessment directors special interest group in measurement and education, SIGAMI. Now that group is not just for state and local assessment directors. So anyone interested in, in what's happening in, in state and assessment at the district and local levels, feel free to join that, that SIGAMI. And the SIGAMI, um, this particular SIGAMI organized an NCME session and a workshop. And um, because of the coronavirus situation, we're actually gonna offer that workshop online. And we're gonna do um, three separate hours on June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd from, from noon to one. And uh, Vince Virgis from the Florida Department of Education, Art Thacker from Homero, and I will be involved in delivering that. So stay tuned for that. And again, it's just consistent with you know, keeping, putting the E back in, edu in uh, NCME. We also did a presentation at the National Conference on Student Assessment last year, CCSSO's conference, that was really well attended. Um, we also did a presentation on, on, um, at the Institute for Credentialing Excellence, trying to get closer to the credentialing colleagues. And um, you know, in both of those, we had some interaction with the audience and we really talked about what NCME could contribute um, with respect to our education mission and, and keeping practitioners up to date on, on the, you know, the most important things going on in measurement. And then Saturday, I don't know how many people participated. We had 109 people online for the session that Edmund Gordon organized uh, called Using Educational Assessments to Educate. Just a great, great session. Um, and we really thank uh, Dr. Gordon for that. And then what about the classroom assessment? They had another successful conference, this time the University of Colorado Boulder, which again, has just really helped us connect with, with the education community more. Um, the Mission Fund has uh, supported uh, the development of some videos and we expect a couple of them to be released on um, some introduction to, to measurement for the general public. Um, and there's also the book series continues. So um, Melissa Margulis and, and Richard Feinberg, uh, I think it's pretty imminent, this integrating timing considerations to improve testing practices. So we're really proud of the different ways we have uh, tried to connect with our education mission. With respect to our diversity goals, we had, um, have established through funding from the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative fellowships for underrepresented professionals in educational measurement. We're specifically targeting um, black and brown measurement um, students because um, they tend to be the most underrepresented in our field. And if you would have told me when we started this initiative, we, we, um, we get twice as many applicants as we had slots for, I, I wouldn't have thought we, we, we could. I thought it might be hard to get 30. 
we had over 60, 65 applications for 30 slots, which just show, goes to show that we do have a lot of colleagues and future colleagues and graduate students um, from more diverse backgrounds than we've traditionally had that we need to not just get in the field, but to embrace and support. Um, unfortunately, we won't see them uh, right now in April because of the coronavirus situation, but in September or in Orlando, we, we will have a real presence of the Chan Zuckerberg Fellows. Uh, the other thing, the other accomplishment are the SIGMEs, the Special Interest Groups in Measurement and Education. We have seven of these special interest groups right now, and you can see the, the number of members. Big Data has the, the largest number of members, um, just barely beating out uh, the scaling, linking, and equating. Now, um, these SIGMEs are open to, to everybody. You can join all seven if you'd like. You see the contact people there. But there is, if you, you don't have to uh, click on this URL. You can go to the NCME, um, Web page, and you will see um, a link for joining a SIGME. <clears throat> so the SIGME is part of a pilot study. The board didn't want to just say, all right, let's have all these uh, SIGMEs and, and we'll walk away from them. Uh, so it's part of a two-year pilot and the evaluation criteria is how many members do you have? So big data is clearly winning. Um, the success of the session. So the SIGMEs are, are asked to sponsor a session at the conference. And what other um, activities do you have that get provide evidence of membership engagement or meeting the NCME mission. So I really want to put out a challenge there for the SIGMEs, which, which one will be the most productive? We want all of you to be productive. Um, there's not a lot of action going on in the SIGMEs right now, so I'm, I'm going to make that call to challenge now. Um, after, after this uh, business meeting, you can go into the NCME community space, log in on the NCME website, and, and start to, to pressure people to, to get some action going. Also, the accomplishments, our graduate student committee has been really active and has, has um, put forward brown bag lecture series, the online uh, Zoom meetings. There's a Humans of Measurement on Facebook, which gives little um, stories about some of the grad students. So I encourage you guys to, to check that out. And thanks to our grad student. Perhaps our biggest accomplishment is we, we really got just an outstanding management group. So here you see Ethan Gray, who's our executive director. And Ethan's in the background right now, make sure we're not getting Zoom bombed or whatever that is. Aaron O'Leary, who uh, helped, really helped pull together a great program for San Francisco. And then we're like, uh, Aaron, can you do the same thing for, for some other city somewhere in September? And um, you know, really just worked hard for that. And uh, Gina Pozzielli has just, just joined us. So thank you for, um, for that. Um, also, with respect to accomplishments, we've got our uh, 25 by 25 initiative. Just to remind you, that's what we want, our goal is to get 2,500 members by the year 2025. So just a little update on that. Um, right now, we've got, uh, at, the, at the close of March, um, so April 1st, we've got 2,061 members. So I'm really glad we finally pushed over that, that 2,000 mark. And that's a change from the same time last year of 6.4%. So we're happy about that. Um, now, if we just kind of project that outwards at, at 6.4%, we'll meet our goal, we'll surpass our goal by 2024, a year early. If we have a 5% growth, we will meet it in 2024, a year early also. But we need at least a 4% growth to keep that going. And we are a bit worried because, you know, the, the measurement, uh, the testing field is, you know, really impacted a lot by um, you know, some of the, the, the national shutdown. So um, we understand people might be getting laid off and so forth. So what can you do? Well, first of all, renew your membership if you haven't already and renew each year. Um, convince a colleague to join. I mean, NCME membership is $95 a year. And in addition to like outstanding online breakfast meetings, business meetings, um, we just have a lot of, of great things, a lot of great benefits of membership. Um, another accomplishment this year, we put out some um, position papers and statements, um, two that are already out. One is the use of college admissions test scores as academic indicators in, in state accountability systems. You can get that from our website. And then the other is uh, misconceptions about group differences in average test scores. And um, <clears throat> then uh, what's forthcoming is testing multilingual learners. That should be posted this week for comments. And then we will take those comments and, um, 
and finalize that version. I think it's going to be another really useful um, position paper. Okay. Um, now these accomplishments are not, of course, due to one person, but rather the lifeblood of NCME is just this, this network of volunteers. And this network starts with the board of directors, um, but also our committees. I mean, we've got 16 committees. Um, then there are the editors of our journals who just do so much incredible, incredible work. Um, uh, the curriculum, um, let's just say classroom assessment task force uh, has just surpassed all their goals and anyone's wildest ambitions. And uh, as I mentioned before, our uh, management group. So with respect to um, the board, I wanna just start with pointing uh, the, the executive committee. Uh, so the officers are me and Ye and, and Rebecca and Rosemary Reshatar, who is the chair of the Buzz Budget Finance Committee. We'll hear from, from Rosemary in a minute. But I, I can't tell you in, um, enough how, what a pleasure it's been to, to work with this group um, the support from, from uh, Rebecca after she left the president and transitioned to past president, she didn't slow down at all. Just constantly thinking about, you know, what can we do to, to support NCMU's goals? And um, yeah, it just makes me so comfortable in, in passing the presidency over to her because uh, she is just amazing. Um, and Rosemary has to attend all the meetings, doesn't get the credit for being on the board, but uh, really does an incredible job, especially given uh, the, the financial crisis that we're in right now. And so we'll, we'll hear from, um, from Rosemary in a minute. But the board, I mean, it's, uh, they're just such a, a dedicated and, and talented group. I, I hope everyone in their lifetime has the opportunity to, to work with such an incredible group of people. Um, ready at a minute's notice, you know, when crises came up, um, we've had calls on weekends, we've had calls late at night, um, just really the, the, the amount they care about the organization and, and the talent level across the, the groups of people um, have, have really been uh, just inspiring. So I really want to thank everyone on the board for all the help that you've done. As I say, um, we're, we're a community of volunteers. Um, before I get to highlighting some of the other volunteer groups, I just want to say a few words about where we are with the 2020 annual meeting. Um, we have been in the process of rescheduling the conference for September. Um, it's extremely difficult to predict, uh, you know, where we're gonna be in September. And um, quite frankly, the, the likelihood of us pulling off in a conference in September seemed bleak. It seems more likely that we'll be, you know, partially sheltering in place or partially open, um, who knows. Um, so that said, and the survey data supported that outlook, I might actually post our, our summary of the survey data, but we had about 460 people respond to the survey and, and people were like, yeah, you know, if I get some support to go, I'll, I'll probably go, but we don't, but we don't know. If people don't get travel support to go, the, the numbers are going to be very low. And we, if we're going to pull off this conference, we want it to be something that's representative of the membership. Um, so we did sign a contract with the Minneapolis Marriott for September 10th, 11th, and 12th. And the reason we signed that is we can cancel it without any fee until May 30th. So we've kind of put ourselves in position to, if a miracle happens, you know, and the, and the, the situation gets better, we can move forward. At the same time, we can, we can back out without any, any consequence at May 30th. So we all know May 1st is May Day. Um, so we're thinking of May 30th as, wait for it, May 30th is now May or May not day. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, um, that's, <laughs> we're hoping it's not May not day, but um, if we go forward with the September conference, there's not going to be a new call for papers. We have a whole conference that's ready to just be uh, exported to, to September. Um, we're going to make it three days instead of five. We know some people won't be able to make it. We won't have any training or workshop days. We're going to move those into online virtual. Um, and even though if we are able to meet in person in Minneapolis, um, we will still have some virtual components for those who, who can't make it. So we'll make that decision uh, May 30th. Registration, if we go forward, we'll begin June 1st. And then we'll ask for people to commit to making their presentations. 
So like I say, it's, it's, a, it's a long shot, but I think we did the right thing by putting ourselves in the position to, if the climate gets better, if the country gets better, the world gets better, we'll be positioned to go. We've got a great deal at a great hotel in, in Marriott. Um, but miracles do happen. I mean, you're looking at someone who's a product of like 20 years of Catholic schooling and, you know, from the um, Italian Catholic culture, we know that miracles can happen and maybe Maria Potenza and Steve Ferrar out there also listening in. So just, just remember, there's St. Jude, the saint of uh, hopeless causes. So if you'd like to pray to St. Jude, uh, I'll invite you. That, that might actually help. Okay. Um, if we don't have a September meeting, we're planning on doing something virtual. What that virtual is going to be, we don't know. It, it's hard to get as, as excited about virtual, but as we saw with the Edmund Gordon session, um, we really, we really can't accomplish a lot. Um, so we're going to, between now and May 30th, we'll be looking at whether we can pull off the conference at the same time. We're going to see what kind of virtual presence uh, there may, we might be able to pull off, if not. So to summarize, by June 1st, we'll make an announcement. And um, for those of you, many of you who are participating in the San Francisco program, you can make a choice if you want to participate in September, if we have the conference in person, or if you want to participate in September, if we have the virtual conference, or just resubmit for 2021. The 2021 conference is seen as a unique new conference. We're not going to just say if you were accepting the 2020 to bring it over. Okay. Um, that's it for the conference. I, I wish I could ask for there any questions, but there's, there's too many people to do that. If you have a question, you can put it in the chat and I will pick it up in a minute. At this time, I would like to turn things over to our budget and finance uh, committee chair, uh, Dr. Rosemary Reshitar, and uh, hopefully she's unmuted. Rosemary? Okay, there we go. There was a delay in me being unmuted. Steve has a lot of control on his end. <laughs> okay, everybody can hear? Can somebody mm -hmm. wave if they can hear? Okay, great. Hi, well, it's been my privilege to serve as the budget and finance chair for the past two years, and I have one more year to go. And I do wanna first start by thanking the committee members from this year, Chad Buckendall, Carla Egan, Mark Krupnik, and Yang Zhao. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge all the work of the TMG staff, especially Ethan Gray, for their critical support to the budget and finance, and especially with the transfer from our previous management group. Next slide. Oh, sorry, that's me. That's you, yeah. That's all right. All right, so even with all the economic turmoil of late, NCME is in very good financial help. I'd like to take credit for that, but I really can't. It's just... Uh, we have a great committee, you know, our investments are in a fairly conservative mix, which helped our cause. And so this slide provides some highlights, and the next slide shows the numbers. First, uh, the major driver of our operating budget is the annual meeting, and Toronto proved to be a favorable location, especially compared with New York. And uh, so our expenses at the end of the year came out lower than anticipated, which contributed to an operating surplus of $84,000 in 2019. Definitely, we were not expecting that. So that was good news also contributing to our bottom line. Uh, not surprisingly, there were some nice investment gains in 2019. We were really excited uh, at the end of the year. And uh, then we had a lot of economic turmoil and um, we had some losses year to date in 2020. And you'll see the numbers on the next page. Uh, we did project a structural deficit of 57,000 for 2020. Because of the conference changes and we're still uncertain about what's going to happen and whether we're holding a conference, the budget uh, reevaluate is being reevaluated, but we'll update it when we have a decision on the fall meeting. Okay, next slide. So this is the summary, the actual numbers. Uh, you can see our estimated expenses for 2020 going into this meeting. We're close to 700,000. They'll be revised pending a decision. Uh, just a reminder, the noticeably high expenses for 2018 were driven by the cost of having the annual meeting in New York. We don't anticipate a comparably high cost meeting location in the coming years. So even, so even with the market conditions, we're in an extremely strong position for a membership organization. And the ratio of our investment portfolio value 
of approximately 1.6 million to the annual expenses of 673,000 is 2.3, and that's extremely strong. So no withdrawals were required from our reserves in 2019 to support operating expenses. And the fluctuations in the investment portfolio are based on market conditions. One note about the portfolio, something a big project for our committee this year with the approval, support, input of the board was that we moved from a commission-based management company to investments in Vanguard, in the, particular in the Life Strategy Growth Fund and in some money funds. Uh, the board also considered and voted to retain a low level of risk for the portfolio, hold a portion of the portfolio in ready, readily accessible cash investment. We will retain a fee-for-service investment advisor to periodically review and advise, and this should result in lower overall fees for our portfolio. And on a closing note, the audit for 2018 was conducted and approved with no problems or issues, and we're in the process of doing the audit for 2019 and we are in strong financial shape and aim to maintain a healthy financial position. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rosemary. You and the, and the other committee members have, have just been great. We appreciate you, you keeping us in check. And, you know, it's sad. We decreased $245,000. That hurts just like all of our retirement accounts and so forth hurt. Um, but in two th we're basically back to where we were in 2018. And uh, we were pretty happy then. Uh, hopefully things won't continue to, to get worse. All right. Um, just getting back to our community and thanking people, I want to thank the, the 2020 program chairs, uh, Thanos, Drew, and, and Ada, just worked so hard to, to put together just such a, a great program. Um, I was on a virtual happy hour last night and someone talked about how they were so much looking forward to the conference, not just because it was in San Francisco, not just because they would get to see all of their, their old friends, but because of the content of the program, it was really just an outstanding session. So I wanna, I wanna thank um, Thanos and Drew and Ada. Um, you see their pictures here. Uh, but I know uh, more than seeing the pictures of, of um, Thanos and Drew and Ada, we wanna see Ada's new baby. So uh, there's Oliver who was uh, born about a week ago and um, we're very happy for, for Ada and her husband uh, welcoming Oliver into the community. And just to let my colleagues at other universities know, Oliver has already signed a letter of commitment to UMass. So he's gonna be getting his, his PhD uh, in our psychometrics program. Thank you, Ada, for um, signing that letter on his behalf. Um, also, with respect to the 2020 program, we had um, Kim Colvin and Anita Rawls who, who put together, I think it was 37 workshops. Um, and people had signed up for them. It really was just such an outstanding list of workshops. Um, that, that might um, transform into, into some type of online presence, at least some of them. And uh, thank you to, to Kim and Anita for that. And then finally, also involved in the program was the Graduate Student uh, Issues Committee co-chairs. We've got Delwyn Carter and Maura O'Riordan, who really um, put together some, some great sessions. And our thanks go out to them also. Then the committees, as I said, we've had about 16 committees and here you see the chairs, but behind each of the chairs between you know, six or more committee members and graduate student representatives. And you guys are really the lifeblood of our organization. We, you've, we've accomplished so much. Here we see the archives committee, the awards committee and social media, website, diversity issues and testing, the mission fund and so forth. So I'd like to thank um, the chairs for, for keeping your committees in line and keeping them working and, and moving forward on helping us accomplish our goals. And then of course, the editors, you know, one of the hardest working jobs in our organization, we have uh, Sandip Asimere right now is uh, editor of JEM and our, our outgoing editors, George Engelhardt and, and Jonathan Templin. We, we have a plaque somewhere for you guys. Um, Deb Harris, who's just doing an outstanding job uh, on EMIP, and Song Ming Kui, who's uh, the graphics editor for that. Andre Rupp, I don't know if, if anyone ha has uh, visited the items portal lately, but there is just some, some great, great content there that, that Andre has been organizing and spearheading. And really thank you to the people developing, uh, developing that content also. Megan Welsh is doing such a great job with the newsletter. The newsletter is more than a newsletter. It's almost like a journal. So, uh, and there's, there's videos and testimonials and, and just so much great information. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. I, 
I told her I had to quadruple her salary because she was doing such a great job. Um, we're excited about the Chinese English Journal of Educational Measurement. Um, you've heard about that the past couple of years. And my understanding is the first issue is imminent. So um, the articles in that journal will be published in both Chinese and English. So uh, we should, should uh, make sense out of it. Uh, okay, and, and that's just such a huge um, accomplishment for us and that now we're, you know, we're starting to try and become more international and this really advances us in that agenda. Mentioned the new book on timing coming out uh, under Brian Clouser's uh, editorship. And then, of course, there's the website. Um, I, I really think we have a great website, um, Matt Gartner and, and Brian Leventhal, what they've been able to do. However, I do have to tell you, and, and yeah, you should pay attention to this. You have to watch what they post uh, because I, I asked them, for example, to, to post something about the SIGME so people could sign up. And look what they posted. I, I had to quickly you know, put them in line and say, no, that's not appropriate. And, and they changed it right away. So, so thanks to Brian and Matt, but, um, but watch out for those guys. Okay. Um, right now, it's my pleasure to turn things over to my colleague on the board, Michael Walker who is going to walk us through and present the NCME Annual Awards. Michael? I'm gonna try and unmute you, Michael. Um, there we go. I was just waiting for you to notice that I could not unmute myself. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. You know, every year, NCME recognizes achievement in a variety of areas, including technical and scientific contributions to the field, outstanding dissertation work, early career scholarship, and career contributions. Award committees are responsible for soliciting nominations from the membership and selecting a recipient. Today, I am very pleased to announce the winners of the 2020 NCME Awards. Next. And next, thank you. NCME Award for Career Contributions to Educational Measurement honors a person whose contributions over a career have broadly influenced the nature of measurement and practice. The NCME Career Award Contribution Awards Committee, chaired by Michael Jodwin, is pleased to unanimously endorse the selection of Dr. Mark Wilson as the 2020 Career Awards winner. Dr. Wilson made a significant impact to the field throughout his career on many dimensions. He has made substantial contributions to scholarship with over 350 invited or refereed presentations, more than 200 chapters, books, or refereed journal articles. His service to the field is also exemplary, including services both the president of NCME and the Psychometric Society, and as editor, editorial board member, or reviewer for dozens of journals. Finally, he's actively impacted the field with a variety of roles on numerous state national and international advisory and governing boards. Dr. Wilson clearly not only has been prolific, but has made high quality and impactful contributions in scholarship, service, and practice that are consistent with the best traditions of this award. Dr. Wilson was nominated by Edward H. Hurdle. Dr. Wilson will give his career award address at the 2021 annual meeting in Orlando. The Alicia Kaskier Award for Outstanding Paper by an Early Career Scholar has been established to honor Alicia's professional commitment and accomplishments and to continue her practice of mentoring and encouraging promising new scholars in the area of educational measurement. The Kaskier Committee, chaired by Sarah Kesson, selected this year's winner, Dr. Edison Cho, in recognition of the paper entitled The Asymptotic Distribution of Average Test Overlap Rate in Computerized Adaptive Testing. Dr. Cho's research has made possible the estimation of standard errors and confidence intervals for the average amount of overlap between two CAT tests, which has practical use in measuring test security risk and item pool use. This work was first presented at NCME in 2017 and is now published in Psychometra, Psychometrica. Dr. Cho was nominated by Kyung Chris Han. NCME Annual Award 
recognizes exceptional achievement in multiple categories during the previous three years, including an outstanding technical or scientific contribution to the public or a field of educational measurement. The annual awards committee, chaired by Melinda Montgomery, selected doctors Michael Colan and Wan Chan Lee as the 2020 award winners for their edited work, Mixed Format Test, Psychometric Properties with a Primary Focus on Equating, Volumes 4 and 5. This work provides practical guidance to the field in equating and classification of mixed format assessments. Additionally, it should be recognized for its mentorship and inclusion of graduate students in this work. This year's winning entry was nominated by Robert L. Brennan. The NCME Annual Award recognized exceptional achievement in multiple categories during the previous three years, including an outstanding technical or scientific contribution to the public or the field of educational measurement. The Annual Awards Committee. Whoops, let's go to the next one. Uh, sorry, the. Which one you are, Mike? Um, uh, yeah, can you go back? Thank you. Sorry. Lost my place for a minute there. No, can you go back? Yeah, thank you. The mm -hmm. Brad Hansen Award honors Bradley Hansen's contributions to the field. The award honors recent research projects that promise to make a substantive contribution to the field of educational measurement or to the development, instruction, or mentoring of new professionals in the field. Hansen Committee, chaired by Dina Morgan, announces this year's selection of the research project by Drs. Matthew Johnson and Sandeep Sinhare, Measures of Agreement for Diagnostic Classification Models. This ongoing work, which has already yielded three published papers, concerns the important topic of reliability-like measures for diagnostic classification models. This research was nominated by Dr. Min Duong. The Brenda H. Lloyd Outstanding Dissertation Award honors an outstanding dissertation in the field of educational measurement. The committee chaired by Xu Wang has selected Dr. Sa Yun Kim as this year's winner. Dr. Kim's dissertation, Constructed Response Data Analysis Using Structural Equation Modeling and Topic Modeling, tackles the difficult subject of statistical analysis of written responses of text prompts and of the scores given to these responses by readers. The groundbreaking work explored reliability of constructed responses and develop innovative models to analyze students' text responses in relation to the numerical scores assigned to them. Dr. Kim was nominated by Jun Cho Laura Liu. The Jason Millman of Promising Measurement Scholar Award, with the support of the Millman Endowment, honors Dr. Millman's work by recognizing a scholar at the early stages of the career whose research has the potential to make a major contribution to the applied measurement field. The com committee chaired by Kyung Chris Han selected Xu Wang as the winner of the award. Dr. Wang's research contributes to personalized assessment and learning by developing innovative adaptive testing that can provide efficient individualized, individualized examinee friendly assessments and by developing novel dynamic psychometric models that can measure and predict student learning outcomes. Dr. Wang was nominated by Hua Hua Chang. All of this year's winners deserve our congratulations for their outstanding contributions to the profession. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thanks, thanks for, for that. And um, to, congratulations to all the award winners. Um, also, let's just take a minute to remember Jason Millman, uh, Brenda Lloyd, and Alicia Kaskoyar, who were uh, some of the most compassionate people in our field and just, just great colleagues. Um, I also want to acknowledge some awards for the, um, the graphics competition for educational measurement issues in practice. We have uh, four award winners and here we see uh, the first. Uh, it was a two-dimensional graph portraying three variables. We've got uh, item response time, item position, and item difficulty. Uh, Sullivan and Bashkov. Uh, similar topic, uh, item difficulty and response time from uh, Hicks and Chirsi and Sakali. And then uh, we've got um, K. 
comparing methods of, of bias by uh, Fink. And finally, uh, Thompson, who gives us a picture of uh, 20 years of uh, content and measurement. So thanks to those uh, four teams of award winners. So thank you to all the award winners, congratulations, and thank you to the award and recognition committees. Um, also want to extend some thanks for exceptional service, starting with our outgoing board members. I already uh, mentioned my appreciation for, for Rebecca Zwick. Um, did not stop at all in her support. Uh, I've worked as, as president-elect with Rebecca when she was president and just saw uh, how effective she was and how, how great she just worked with everybody. And, and I appreciate her support this year also. Michael Rodriguez was called in uh, for a one-year appointment as, as a, off the bench. He had been on the board before. He knew what he was getting into, and he, he graciously stepped in anyway. And Michael, um, I've really appreciated uh, all your insight and, and all you brought to the board and pending this uh, most recent position paper and so forth. Um, we're really lucky to have had you. University of Minnesota is really lucky to have had you also. And Rose, your, your contributions have just been invaluable, your, your perspective. And, in representing the, the credentialing and, and, and state uh, licensing uh, area and um, your work for the standard test use committee and publications committee. Uh, I, I really have appreciated all your insight and, and, uh, and support uh, over the past uh, couple of years. So thank you all for your service to the board. Somewhere in cyberspace, there are some plaques uh, that should make their way to you. Um, it was a little problem. They were for sale on eBay, but we're, we're getting them back and, and they will be delivered to you hopefully sometime soon. So thank you, um, outgoing board members. A little sad to see them go, but we have some incredible uh, new board members joining us. So Derek Briggs is president-elect and Derek's uh, hot off the heels of a very successful um, classroom assessment conference at, at his university in Boulder. Um, Ellen Fort is a new board member uh, who a member at large slot and Sharon Rosenberg uh, from NAGB is, rep is a new board member representing a state and federal agency. So thanks to the three of you for stepping up and agreeing to, to provide service to NCME and I look forward to working with you. Okay, now the moment we've all been waiting for. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, uh, Ye Tong, Dr. Tong, who uh, in a few minutes will become uh, president of NCME. Um, Ye is responsible probably for more testing, you know, quality test development and reliable test administration for, for more tests across the United States, if not the world, than, than anybody else. Um, and she does it all with a smile. Um, in fact, no one can tell me more that I'm definitely wrong with a smile than, than Ye Tong can. <laughs> so, uh, just kidding. Um, it's just been a pleasure working with you, Ye, and I am um, just really, not just honored to be introducing you, but honored to be working with you and to um, watch you and support you in your role uh, of NCME president. Um, so although it's, it's, a, it's a bit bittersweet that, that my term is ending, um, I, I couldn't be happier handing the reins over to someone as talented and as hardworking and as passionate about NCME and um, someone who just really gets things done. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to present to you uh, the next NCME president, Dr. Ye Tong. Thank you, Steve. Um, I felt like our roles are a little bit reversed this time with this first ever um, NCME virtual business meeting. Uh, usually this is my turn to introduce you and uh, to um, really make you on edge and uncomfortable. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna write notes for that and, and uh, get back to you at some point, hopefully soon. So um, if we will uh, go to the next page, um, but first of all, I am very honored um, to be able to play this role for our organization. I am um, very excited. There are so many presidents keeping um, our organization in the past, leading the organization in the past, and I'm excited to be able to, to follow their footsteps and move our organization continue forward. I would like to take this opportunity to share the priorities I'll be focusing on in 2020, 2021. Um, 
strengthen the tie between research and practice, let technology continue to help advance our field and also continue the reach of NCME. Um, I will expand this a little bit uh, if we can move on to the next slide. Strengthen the tie between research and practice. Um, I firmly believe research and practice um, need to depend on each other, they need to inform each other. And I would like to continue to foster a close bond between the two. Um, I have been with Pearson for, actually this past Saturday was my 15 year anniversary with Pearson. So I've been a practitioner for a very long time. Um, as a practitioner, I think it's very important for us to make sure that we practice the best measurement in the field. And I think it's very important that we continue to look into the innovative methods, innovative ways of carrying out measurements. Uh, I don't think it's good enough for us to say, oh, that's always what we've been doing and that's what we will continue to do. We have to continue to look for better ways and continue to move the assessment forward. On the other hand, with research, um, that's the founding strengths of our organization that continue to help advance the measurement field. But at the same time, um, it is the practice of measurement that reaches tens of thousands of people, and that's where the real decisions are being made. So I think it's important also for our research to be well-grounded in practice and help inform practice and make us better. Um, so I would like to, to, to focus on this priority as one of the things uh, for this year. Let technology help advance measurements. Of course, um, we continue to evolve and technology continue to evolve and it's helping us to really, um, it's helping us to really move forward. Um, we see a lot of assessments now moving from paper-based to online-based and that's changing how we measure students, right? In a variety of different ways. We have different item types. We are doing different scoring models. We have a different way of reporting. And uh, um, because of that movement, because of the enhancement from the technology, we are able to collect a lot more data now. We collect data um, on time spent on the task. We collect data, a lot more data than the just right and wrong answers to a question. Um, we could even collect data on um, how long I'm, um, the student's cursor is hovering a party part of the item. Um, we are also talking about ex uh, expanding the fields we're measuring, not just the English language arts, mathematics, science, and social studies. We are looking into other areas that we need to uh, measure a bit more, like collaboration skills or critical thinking skills or social and emotional learning. There's just a vast sea of data for us to go through and make sense of it all and uh, let technology continue to help us advance our field. The third priority I will continue to work on is the continued reach of NCME. Um, you heard Steve mention earlier about our membership and how uh, we have been really trying to expand our membership. Um, he's done a fantastic job in, cr in creating our membership and I would like to continue to follow that lead. Um, as a matter of fact, just last Friday, our NCME board meeting, we passed a motion where we will be monitoring the numbers of our members at uh, every year at specific times to continue to monitor. Um, in the same line of uh, logic, I would like to um, continue the footsteps from Randy and Rebecca from the past presidents in um, NCME's influence on inform the public um, inform policy, um, inform the media so that we can promote the best uses of the tests and their scores. Uh, those are fundamentally um, our role and our responsibility. So uh, these are the priorities that we'll be focusing on. I'm very, very looking forward to it. Um, going on to the next slide, I would like to introduce the uh, program chairs and the training chair we will, uh, that will work alongside me for the 2021 conference in Orlando. So the program chairs are Susan Davis Becker from ACS and Leslie King from Center for Assessment. The training chair is Sarah Kesson uh, from Pearson. So um, thanks in advance for all the hard work and laughter and blood and tears you're gonna pour into putting a wonderful program together for uh, 2021. For the conference of 2021, uh, let's move on to the uh, next slide. 
Um, I want to call out a few things for the conference we will have in 2021. So the theme is bridging practice and research. Um, I would, um, as Steve mentioned earlier, what um, our timeline for proposal, um, uh, call for proposal, as well as uh, the deadline for proposal are right now at this time are going to be very similar to what we've done in the past years. So the call for proposal will be available in June, early June, and we're shooting for uh, early August for the deadline for proposal submission time. Um, the theme is bridging research and practice. So besides all the wonderful topics our members are interested in, uh, would like to submit, we are calling out emphasis around um, really wonderful uses of research in practice, as well as practice um, generated research that is, um, you know, uh, the research people are doing to try to solve a particular practical problem. Um, additionally, you know, since we are where we are, all in, in our homes, to talk, um, to have a virtual conference uh, business meeting, uh, first ever, and I'm hopefully last ever as well. Um, I would like to also um, organize some COVID-19 sessions. Um, I think in the past months alone, because of the virus, because how it's impacting our lives, um, it's actually uh, impacting our industry quite a bit as well. Um, we see a, a surge in online proctoring, um, which is it's just flourishing. Many assessments have um, uh, decided to go to the online proctoring as a particular delivery mode, like uh, GRE, you can take the GRE at the comfort of your home now. Um, AP exam is also going online proctoring. LSAT is moving on next year, or next in, in May, next month for online proctoring, along with a lot of other licensure certification exams. We also have the news that ACT and ICT are going to look into online proctoring options if schools continue to be closed. Um, I would like for us to um, really think about the implications and what are the things we are doing to make sure the tests are still reliable, valid um, uh, at the next year's conference to share our experiences. Um, talking about school closure, we also know, you know, most of the states have canceled their summative assessments. Um, Spring usually is the time we give them, and because of the school closures and the opportunity to learn among other things, the uh, summative assessments are mostly canceled. So, what does that mean, you know, for accountability system on um, the measure of student growth? Now we have one year lack of data. I think there are a lot of practical issues that will impact our um, industry. So it would be really, really good for us to get together and discuss those issues and challenges and share the lessons we've learned. Um, I'm hoping by April of 2021, COVID-19 or the coronavirus are well under control by then, but hopefully we can get together and talk about its impact to our industry. Um, and with that, I think I'm uh, actually going to turn back to Steve. Okay, thank you, Yay. I'm now ready to pass, hold on one second. You can tell we've practiced a lot of times. Oh, yeah. I'm now ready to pass the presidential flame of power over to Ye Tong. <laughs> See, magic does happen. Thank you. <laughs> now, Ye, if you will please uh, hold the presidential candle of power in your left hand and in your right hand, raise your right hand and please repeat after me. I, Ye Tong. I yet <laughs> do solemnly swear to solemnly swear <laughs> to work with the NCME community to work with the NCME community <laughs> <laughs> to advance theory and applications of educational measurement to benefit society to benefit society <laughs> and to be guardian of the realm <laughs> and to be the guardian of the realm <laughs> and protector of the seven sigamies and protect the seven sigamies with passion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to take my back seat and wish Ye a very successful presidency. Thank you, Ye. Thank you all for being NCME members. We are more than a conference and I look forward to turning things over to Ye and uh, hopefully seeing you all in September. Thank you, Steve.
Um, so I am so getting back to you on this one. Just my <laughs> But this is this is really good, um, and I'm glad our business meeting uh, went well as well as it did. And thank you all so much for attending the business meeting. Um, I'm really hoping this is the last time we'll ever have a virtual Lindsay business meeting. Uh, but um, this should conclude our business meeting. And please be safe and be healthy. And we really, really hope we'll get to see you soon. Thank you very much. The end. Thank you, Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.